you know what? Let's class things up around here. Dude, this looks surprisingly good. So let's get to it. Why is the Oval Office an oval? As the office and home of perhaps the hardest working executive in the land. We're in the Oval Office. We're in the Oval Office. This is the President's office. So since we couldn't play golf together, we ought to visit and talk about golf and other things together. People feel a certain reverence for the space. <laughs> the history of that weird, beautiful room in the West Wing has a practical answer, but there's also a bigger answer that says something about America. Do you like the uh, funk music, by the way? Decided to choose funk music for the least funky place in the world. So let's start with this. This is inside the White House during renovations in 1950. It is stripped to the bone like a rotisserie chicken. Now, this isn't the West Wing, but look at this thing. The West Wing and the White House and the Oval Office are ever-evolving, ever-changing things. But let's start by tracking it backwards. You can see where the Oval Office is today. It's the, you know, curvy walled thing right here. The phrase Oval Office actually didn't show up in the New York Times until 1955, so it is kind of a newish idea. It's been in its current location since 1934 when FDR expanded the West Wing and moved the Oval Office from the middle. Doesn't it look awesome in black and white, by the way? I feel way more presidential in black and white. This is all after a straight up fire gutted the West Wing in 1929. Those are the big changes after the Oval Office's creation. President William Howard Taft was the first person to use the Oval Office in October 1909. Here he is signing a bill there in 1915, and here it is in that general era in all its overly glory. Though Teddy Roosevelt built the West Wing earlier, he worked in this office, which, wow, <laughs> gotta be honest. First, I thought the Oval Office was a bit over the top, but then I see this thing, and I'm kind of like, yeah, we need an Oval Office. <laughs> so that's the capsule history, but why is this thing oval? That is where things get a little complicated. Almost all the sources say that the design of the Oval Office shape was based on the Blue Room, a stateroom in the White House proper, or the Yellow Room, which is also an oval and sits just above it. The Blue Room was used for meeting people. Here it is in 1904 in a picture that I chose for its extreme blueness. And the Yellow Room was used as an office, as you can see during this 1886 picture. The Oval Office is kind of a mashup of both of those functions, the stateroom and the office. But I realize this is kind of an unsatisfying answer. Yes, that's why the Oval Office was oval, because of those rooms, but why were those rooms oval? And I think there are actually two key answers. What? I'm already a guy in his basement with an Oval Office taped to his wall. You don't think I'm gonna go full presidential? So why were these rooms oval? The common reason you'll see is that George Washington wanted it that way. Here's a diagram. See, as first president, he had these meetings called levies. They were meetings with the public, a holdover from the monarchy. Washington would be at the center and people would stand around him waiting to be talked to. An oval made it so that people could be equidistant from Washington. I'm not saying this is untrue, but I kinda don't think it's enough. Here's the Queen's Levy Room, circa 1816. Notice it's non-oval nature. And here is Martha Washington holding a levy in a not oval room. So I think there's a bit more to it than George Washington's personal preferences. James Hoban, an Irish-born architect shown here in this weird wax bas relief, designed the White House and was responsible for the oval blue and yellow rooms. So yeah, he was taking direction from George, but he was also responding to architectural trends. This is the State House in Charleston, South Carolina that Hoban worked on. See the White House similarity? At the time, the architecture world in England and Europe was enthralled with Andrea Palladio's work. Palladian architecture was, in itself, a classical revival, featuring a lot of stuff like an emphasis on symmetry. England loved it, Jefferson loved it, Europe loved it, and architect James Hoban loved it too. Leinster House in Dublin was cited as particular inspiration, and you can see the semicircular room in the floor plan right here. Architects like Hoban strove to adapt that to their work in America, 
It was trendy and elite. So in addition to levees, being tied to that culture, the elite in architecture in Europe, was the reason those blue and yellow rooms were oval, and by extension, the Oval Office too. But why care? This is where I do my uh, Kevin Spacey impression, if it were like 2015. I've been trying to wrap my head around the bigger meaning of this video. On the one hand, you got this procession of Oval Offices. Oval Office, Oval Office, Oval Office, Oval Office. All different, constantly changing. On the other hand, you have this clear progression of architecture and culture. How does this add up to something meaningful? I keep returning to that image from the beginning, one that I'd never seen before researching this topic. The one of the White House as just a shell, but a shell that they bothered to preserve. The Oval Offices of the 20th and 21st century were about showing continuity with the Taft Oval Office, and that Oval Office was about showing continuity with the White House Ovals, the yellow and blue rooms. And those rooms themselves were about showing continuity with England and with Europe, both through the design of the rooms and the rituals that happened inside them. The Oval Office, like the country itself, is about projecting continuity, whether that continuity is there or not. Sometimes that continuity looks like a flag or a constitution or an oath that every president takes. And sometimes it looks like an oval. All right, that's it for this video. Let's shift to a more dramatic angle here. If you saw my video a while ago, why the Pentagon is a Pentagon, uh, that's where the idea for this came from. Part of my new series called Why the Thing is a Thing. Uh, <laughs> let me know if you have an idea for other things that I should explain why there are those things. Y you know what I mean. Let's see, get some drama here. Thank you for watching this video today. If you liked it, please drop a like and smash that subscribe button. Or leave a comment with your favorite tidbit of history about the Oval Office or the White House's construction. Until next time. Goodbye. Goodbye, I guess? I don't know. Is that, is that how these presidential addresses end? <laughs> okay.